It's not there, is it? Leonardo intended for you to understand and recognize that the chalice was not the cup that he drank from, but the woman sitting next to him who held the bloodline of Jesus Christ. She is the Holy Grail. She's the one sought out. She's the one that holds in her the blood of Jesus. Give you something to think about. Now, we've covered the doctrines of the Da Vinci Code. We've covered the, the gist of what it's talking about. And now let's look at some of the men who are behind the scenes who are trying to not only guard this doctrine and pass it down, but I believe in these last days they want certain aspects of this thing known. Now, I will tell you that there's a lot of controversy over... Dan Brown makes a claim at the beginning of the book about a group called the Priory of Zion. Now, without getting into a lot of details, there has been a lot of things said about this Priory of Zion. Some say that it's a fraud, it's a fake. If you'll read a lot of other uh, Christian literature or videos about the Da Vinci Code, they, they want you to know that the Priory of Zion never existed. Well, even if it didn't, we do know historically that from the Tower of Babel on, there has always been a group of men in secret societies, secret cults, that have, that have basically worked to undermine the work of God here on this earth. And they have also been the custodians of a secret doctrine. We can trace that down. Freemasonry actually claims that it start, started in the Tower of Babel. By the way, what did they build the Tower of Babel with? Does anybody know? Bricks. Who builds with bricks? Masons. There's a connection for you right there. So all the way back from the Tower of Babel, we know that secret societies have existed in one form or another. And in this case, we look at these guys called the Knights Templar. Now, let me tell you this story. What we do know historically about the Knights Templar, or the best that we can guess. Around 1100 AD, there was these nine knights. They were very poor. They didn't have a, two pennies to rub together. And they decided they were going to work their salvation by traveling down to Jerusalem and, uh, and uh, guarding pilgrims as they made their way back and forth from Europe to Jerusalem because there was Muslim terrorists in, the, those, in those days. Well, there's Muslim terrorists now. So the King Baldwin of Jerusalem gave them lodging in horse stables located at the base of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, Solomon's Temple Mount. Now, we don't know whether they were actually looking for this or they just happened to find it, but they found a tunnel that was running underneath the Temple Mount. We know that there are tunnels now that run underneath the Temple Mount. And uh, at some point, then when they were going through this tunnel, they broke into a chamber and they found something. Now, historically, we don't know what it is that they found. Some scholars say that they found the gold or the treasure of Solomon underneath there. Well, that might be true. Some scholars say that they found a cache of secret documents uh, which may have been these Gnostic Gospels that we've been talking about because it looks like that Leonardo read these Gnostic Gospels, doesn't it? And he incorporated it into his artwork. So it may be that. One, and by the way, do you recognize these scenes here that I'm putting on the screen? They're from a movie that I, you probably have watched called National Treasure. And they tell this same story about the Knights Templar finding a treasure under there. Now, whatever it was, these guys, these poor knights, when they, they, they carry this treasure back into Europe somewhere, and all of a sudden, the Knights Templar become the richest, most powerful men in all of Europe. Okay? These guys are wealthy. They're powerful. They have land holdings uh, uh, all over Europe. And uh, they even have their own navy. The Knights Templar have their own navy. And they are above nations in Europe. Kings cannot control the Knights Templar. If you've ever written a check, you can thank the Knights Templar because they invented it. Because imagine if you were a nobleman and you were traveling from Paris to Madrid and you, didn't want it, you wanted to carry some money with you, but you didn't want to carry it with you because you'd get robbed by Robin Hood or somebody like that. So you went to a Knights Templar, gave them your bag of coins. They wrote out a little document for you. And when you finally got to Madrid, you would handed that document to the Knights Templar there. Well, they gave you your gold. Pretty slick, isn't it? That's, they were the first international bankers. Okay? Now, 
For about 200 years, the popes of Rome loved the Knights Templar because they were doing things for them. But all of a sudden, the Knights Templar became too wealthy and too powerful. And the pope, let's say the pope wanted the king of Spain to do something for him. Well, if the Knights Templar didn't want it done, it didn't get done. And that made the pope very, very angry. And so he decided that he needed to get rid of the Knights Templar. So uh, in, in around 1307, on Friday the 13th, and that's where we get the myth, by the way, of Friday the 13th, on Friday, October the 13th, the Knights Templar, most of them, were arrested. Uh, they were tried for heresy and treason against the Pope and all this stuff. Some of them were executed. Have you ever heard of uh, Jacques de Molay? Okay. The de Molay organization of Freemasonry is named after him. He was the Grand Master of the Knights Templar. And he was one of those that was arrested and killed. So, the remaining Knights Templar, they have this treasure, whatever it is, and they have this secret doctrine. They know that now they have to go underground. And they can no longer exist publicly they have to be secret and they have to be private. And so they passed their wealth, the secret of their wealth and the secret doctrine down in various ways and to various peoples. Number one, a secret society that we will refer to as the Priory of Zion, although it may not have been called that in the days that these men ruled over it, but we'll just call it that. Number two, the Freemasons, and I'll show you the connection later on. The Rosicrucians, those who talk about the rosy cross. And remember that I said that because we're going to see it later. The Mormon church. Now, why do I talk about the Mormon church? Number one, did you know that jo Joseph Smith and most of the elders of the Mormon church were Freemasons? And that in, now watch this, because this whole idea about, about the sacred feminine worships what's called hieros gamos or sacred marriage. Well, that's exactly what the Mormons believe. The Mormons believe that if you and your wife are joined together in the, ritual, in the temple ritual, that when you die, you'll get to become gods over your own planet. That's stupid, isn't it? Okay? So when, they, when a husband and wife is, is being married inside the Mormon temple, they go into this little secret chamber, and these Mormons, they have on their holy underwear, okay? Now, that's not underwear with holes in it, okay? That's sacred underwear, this undergarment. And on, the, on one side of this undergarment is the blade, and on the other side is the chalice, the Holy Grail in the Mormon church. The Jesuits, and I talk about the Jesuits because they're like the CIA of the Vatican. In the Vatican, in the upper levels of the Vatican, cardinals, bishops, Jesuits, you name it, they're Freemasons. They have been, the, they have been infiltrated by Freemasonry. I could talk about that all night, I won't. Wicca. What is Wicca? Witchcraft. We're going to see this principle of the sacred feminine is what witchcraft is all about. Hollywood. I mean, you believe they're guardians of a mystery, of a secret doctrine. Oh, trust me, we're going to see these. You want to hang on to your seat, folks, all right? Now, up here on the screen is a list of men who supposedly were grandmasters of the secret society we call the Priory of Zion. Now, there's some evidence to suggest that this list is a fake. However, the names that we know from history that are on this list, we know that these men were either occultists or alchemists. What is alchemy? Does anybody know what alchemy is? Sorcery. And it was the whole idea is this medieval idea that through discovery of what was called the philosopher's stone, you could turn lead or any base metal into what? gold okay actually alchemy or that idea is a metaphor because they had to hide the real doctrine the real doctrine was that through discovery of what's called the philosopher's stone that man any man could be turned into a god or an immortal okay an ascended master there you go it's all over the place and so we have a name on here it's uh, on the uh, on the left hand side there the name of nicholas Flamel. Does anybody recognize him? 